Have you ever stopped to ponder what truly makes love universal? Across continents, through every age and amidst diverse cultures, love remains a constant, a language that every heart speaks and understands. It's a force that transcends barriers, connects strangers, and mends the deepest rifts. But what is it about love that resonates so universally? Is it merely a feeling, or is there something more profound at its core? This question brings us to the doorstep of one of history's most influential figures, Jesus of Nazareth. His life and teachings provide a window into the essence of what can truly be considered universal love. Jesus taught love not as a simple emotion, but as an action. A call to extend compassion, understanding, and forgiveness, even under the most challenging circumstances. This type of love is not confined by the conditions of society or the limitations of human nature. Now let's delve into how Jesus encapsulated this universal love in his teachings. What does it really mean to love your neighbor as yourself? This profound commandment, spoken by Jesus, emphasizes not just a feeling, but an active commitment to treat others with the same care and respect we wish for ourselves. It's a call to empathy, compassion, and action that transcends all boundaries of society. In its biblical context, this directive was revolutionary. It challenged the norms of a society that was deeply divided by class, ethnicity, and religion. Jesus didn't just preach this. He lived it, showing love to the marginalized and the outcast, the poor, and the sinners. He asked his followers to do the same, to break down barriers and build bridges of kindness and understanding. Fast forward to today and the relevance of this message remains undiminished. Imagine a scenario where you find your elderly neighbor struggling to carry groceries. Choosing to help isn't just an act of kindness, it's a living testament to loving your neighbor. Or consider a moment in a crowded bus when a stranger needs a seat. Offering yours is a simple yet powerful embodiment of this commandment. Furthermore, in an era where digital connections often replace face-to-face -face interactions, choosing to engage with those around us with genuine interest and care can have a transformative impact. It's about making the conscious choice to be present, to listen, and to offer support. Embracing this command can transform everyday interactions into profound expressions of love. Imagine walking by someone in dire need, what would you do? Let's delve into one of the most evocative teachings of Jesus, the parable of the Good Samaritan. This story begins with a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, who unfortunately falls into the hands of robbers. They strip him of his belongings, beat him, and leave him half dead by the roadside. Now by chance, a priest comes along. Seeing the injured man, he crosses to the other side of the road and passes by. Similarly, a Levite, when he arrives at the place and sees the man, also avoids him and continues on his way. Then a Samaritan, a figure traditionally viewed with suspicion and disdain by the audience of the time, comes upon the scene. Unlike the others, he is moved with compassion. He goes to the man and bandages his wounds, using oil and wine to soothe and disinfect them. Then he places the wounded man on his own animal, brings him to an inn, and takes care of him. The next day he gives the innkeeper two denarii and instructs him to look after the man, promising to reimburse any additional expenses on his return. Through this parable, Jesus highlights the essence of true compassion and unconditional love. It's not about helping only those who belong to our group or who can repay us, but about aiding anyone in need, irrespective of their background or circumstances. This story challenges us to question our own actions and prejudices in the face of others' needs. Loving those who love us might be easy, but what about our enemies? This question introduces a profound and radical teaching that has echoed through the ages, originating from Jesus Christ himself, the call to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Imagine the scene, a dusty road in ancient Judea, a crowd gathered around a charismatic speaker who challenges the very bedrock of human instincts. Instead of advocating revenge or hatred, Jesus presents an alternative, love. Not just a passive, silent love, but an active, vibrant love that reaches even those who oppose us. This concept isn't just lofty spiritual rhetoric, it's a practical blueprint for healing and reconciliation. In a world where conflicts seem endless, from family disputes to global crises, the message of loving one's enemies acts as a bomb. It encourages us to see the enemy as a fellow human capable of change, deserving of compassion. Consider modern scenarios where this teaching could shift the narrative. Political divides that slice through communities, or long-held family feuds. Engaging with this teaching could transform these situations, fostering forgiveness where there was once bitterness. It prompts a question, 
What would happen if we responded to aggression with empathy, to slander with kindness? This teaching challenges us to extend grace and understanding, even when it's least expected. It asks us to look beyond our grievances and see the potential for peace and reconciliation. It's a challenging call to extend love beyond the boundaries of comfort and familiarity. Out of all the commandments, which one did Jesus say was the greatest? In the tapestry of spiritual teachings, Jesus' response to this question stands out with profound simplicity, yet deep significance. When asked about the greatest commandment, Jesus encapsulated the entire moral spectrum of the law into a dual commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments are not separate strands but are deeply interwoven. Loving God with all one's heart, soul, and mind naturally extends to loving one's neighbor, because in the Christian view, every person is made in the image of God. Therefore, to love God fully, one must also love what is created in His image. This concept transcends mere affection or emotional fondness. It calls for a love that is active, sacrificial, and unconditional. It challenges individuals to extend kindness, not just to those who are easy to love, but to every neighbor, every individual they encounter. This kind of love acts as a mirror reflecting one's own relationship with the divine. Moreover, these commandments serve as the foundation of Christian ethics, influencing countless aspects of daily life and interactions. They compel believers to transcend personal biases and embrace a broader, more inclusive love. These commandments are not just religious duties, but pathways to a fulfilling and harmonious life. How can we reflect Jesus' love in our daily lives? Throughout this exploration of love as taught by Jesus, we've journeyed through the essence of unconditional love. Loving neighbors, showing mercy like the Good Samaritan, embracing even our adversaries, and honoring the greatest commandment of all, to love God with all our heart and our neighbor as ourselves. Now, let's consider how we can weave these profound teachings into the fabric of our everyday existence. Each morning brings a new opportunity to embody this love. It starts with empathy. When we encounter someone in distress, stepping into their shoes, feeling their struggles, and offering a helping hand is a direct reflection of Jesus' compassion. Forgiveness is another cornerstone. In a world quick to judge and slow to pardon, choosing forgiveness can heal divisions and mend relationships. This doesn't just change the lives of those we forgive, it transforms our own spirit, freeing us from the burden of resentment. Promoting peace is yet another way. In interactions both big and small, we can be peacemakers. Whether it's resolving conflicts in our community or simply offering a kind word instead of fueling an argument, each act of peace is a ripple that extends Jesus' legacy of love. By integrating these actions into our daily routines, we don't just follow a moral directive, we actively participate in a transformative experience that elevates our lives and those around us. Embracing Jesus' teachings on love can lead us to live more compassionate and fulfilling lives. Let's strive to make love our universal language.